Thanks for sticking with us on American Warrior Radio right here on the Talk To Me station, AM 1300 WMEL. Glenn, we've been talking about healthcare enrollment and how important it is for everybody that has served their country honorably in the military to engage this benefit, especially nowadays because times are tough. They may not have their, their COBRA. They may have lost their health insurance when they lost their job. So many folks have lost their jobs. Maybe they're in between work. Whatever the situation, we got to have them get there and at least enroll. That's right, and it's very important for the National Guard and Reserve because, unfortunately, you've heard us talk before, they're, they're uh, not faring very well in coming back and uh, having their um, uh, previous employment kept for them or they're losing that for some reason or other. And we got... Uh, unacceptably high unemployment with some of the local units here. So Right, the, the Servicemen Civil Relief Act from like the 40s, even though there's all kinds of rules and laws on the books, they're not necessarily upheld. When these guys and gals, and again, keep in mind, 4 out of 10, 4 out of 10, 40% of our deployed forces make are coming from the Guard and Reserves. That's a huge number, and the uh, leader of the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs has singled out a... National Guard unit right here locally on the Space Coast, the 715th MP Company, is having a tremendous amount of unemployment, something in the neighborhood of 35 to 40 percent. That's a tragedy. Oh, that's just totally unacceptable. And they have a squad of about 200 some, and nearly all of them have already deployed to Afghanistan, come back, been doing their drill weekends and their UTAs and their annual training, and then they're going to be redeployed. They're going back to Afghanistan here in just a number of months. They have DD-214s because they were called up to active duty. Absolutely, and it'll, it'll definitely say they completed the tour for which called active duty. So, you know, they're they're definitely eligible for VA health care under the five-year rule and just the regular rule with the uh, completion of the required tour when federalized. Exactly, and if at, during your demobilization, I'm speaking specific to these guardsmen and reservists, you're going to supposedly be getting a briefing on VA health care and dental benefits, and they'll supposedly give you the VA application for health care enrollment, and then they'll notify you within two weeks after you've completed this whether you're eligible to seek care at any of 152 VA medical centers across the country. If you did not get that information during your demob, your demobilization briefings, we have explained to you already how to go about that. Jump into the nearest VA clinic with your DD-214 and go at it. Just simple form, a 1010-EZ. They uh, note that there's a post-deployment health reassessment survey. Three to six months after the, the troops return, the VA is supposedly going to contact them and ask them what their concerns are and what their transition has been like. I have not heard this reported. I have not gotten any of that information. No, that's a new one on me. I think it's a good thing. The, it won't be perfect like anything. The yeah, VA we'll will will have a better chance of getting a hold of you if you filed a claim for service-connected disability or enrolled in the VA health care system or both because then they'll have a good address on you. So even more reason to stay uh, current in the VA system. I think it's a good idea and be one of those that the VA can get to. Exactly, so important. And the Yellow Ribbon Reintegration Program, which is an opportunity for you to meet with local resources, whether it's nonprofits or jobs or job fairs. The VA is on site at these Yellow Ribbons. The idea is that during these welcome home events, these Yellow Ribbons, these 30, 60, 90, this is how they do it one month, two months, three months after you've gotten home. You're supposed to reassemble with your unit and be given briefings. Now, we work closely with a couple guard units here locally in Florida. If you're listening to this in uh, Maine or Massachusetts or Texas, you check into, if you're a guard or reservist, check with your unit and see when your yellow ribbon events are taking place. Yeah, we, we know we, you know that uh, the last thing on your mind is to sit through a whole bunch of briefings when you want to go and be with your family after you've been deployed. And we fully understand that, but it's becoming more and more important that you do sit there and listen to those briefings and actually listen and pay attention and take notes because they're giving you information that uh, you're going to desperately need in some cases. So, you know, pay attention. I know it's no fun. 
but uh, you know you'll you'll still get cut loose to be with your family. <laughs> exactly, it's it's so important because it does. You mentioned the, a key word there, family. These benefits will have a, a dramatic impact on your family as well. Oh, absolutely. So. And the VA case managers that work with the WTUs, the Warrior Transition Units, this is all valuable information. They're going to speak to you about uh, rehabilitation, you know, vocational rehabilitation, all types of different programs and services. But if you're not getting this information, if you're not getting notification to attend Yellow Ribbons or getting any of these post-deployment health reassessment surveys, call up the VA or visit your local VA and say, hey, I'm having a problem with this or I've got an issue with that, and they should seek to help you. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, there, there's some more good news. They are get, I want to congratulate the Garden Reserves for getting much better than they were two, three years ago. I know when we first started the show with Garen and I, it wasn't so good back then, I think. It was more like the old days. Okay, how many of you want to stay here for two days and listen to about all your benefits? <laughs> and how many of you want to go home? Well, guess who raised their hand? Everybody on the exactly. second question and went home and got no information that they needed about their benefits or possible benefits. So. But we got some really interesting news you're going to share in a second. Before we get there, though, I wanted to mention to all our listeners out there across America, even if you're listening across one of the ponds, if you're over, uh, no matter where you're at, we are always dealing with warriors that have lost their spouse or vice versa. We happen to have a sergeant that was killed in action in Afghanistan less than a month ago. He's a ranger. Uh, Eggleston was his name. His wife is struggling to come to grips with life without her husband, a soldier that had served three combat tours. On his third one, he lost his life. We were able to help send her to the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors this last Memorial Day weekend. We are going to provide her and her family a special time, a special time to kind of decompress and relax and reconfigure their lives in July. If you'd like to donate to this oh-so-important cause, Go to avetproject.org. AVET is an acronym. What's it mean? American Veterans Empowerment Team. And that's what we're seeking to do. Empower our warriors and their families to deal with all sorts of issues and circumstances, but really to give them the knowledge that they need to succeed on their own. Well, that's right. And this is the real deal, folks. We talk about it, and he talked about the packs that they're sending to help out those who are still deployed. And, you know, helping out 900 people today out at the base and on and on and on and on. You know, you're going to chip in somewhere. This is the place to chip in. I, You know, I'm as cynical as the rest of you about most of these people, but this, this is the real deal. And you can contribute to the Eggleston Fund by clicking on the Donate button, whether it's $5, 50 or 500 Whatever amount's going to be appreciated and put to good use for Karen Eggleston and her two children to have a good time and learn about some of her benefits and basically kind of uh, plan or roadmap her life from here on out because she did. She just lost her husband who was one courageous American warrior that fought bravely and died so that you and I and Glenn and our producer and the station owners here can live free and enjoy our liberties. So I encourage you to click on the button and donate whatever you can. With saying that, Glenn, there's some really neat news on the horizon here in Vieira. Yeah, we'd already told you that uh, the finally the contract has come through and a private company is building an assisted living facility just adjacent to the clinic out there in Vieira, which is off from the ball field. A long home run in center field would probably hit the clinic. <coughs> And it'll probably hit this new assisted living facility now, which is a good thing. This is being built by Avenco uh, Senior Housing. They're out of Midlothian, Virginia. That's a mouthful, Midlothian. Uh, well, back it up, back <laughs> it up. Assisted living facility, what is that? Well, an assisted living facility is where people need assistance with daily living activities, but they're not at the point where they need skilled nursing care 24-7. When you reach the 24-7 skilled nursing care, you have to unfortunately go into a nursing home. An assisted living facility, they have a greater degree of independence. They can still get around and do many things, but they need help with a lot of daily activities. Some of that may be medication management and eating and cooking and, and many things like that. And so they can walk on their own. They're ambulatory. Well, in most cases, that's absolutely true. And, and we're really looking forward to this. This is going to be an 86-bed facility. It's going to have six uh, 
Most of them will be uh, large master bedroom type arrangements with their own kitchenette which has a microwave oven, a refrigerator, and a sink. Uh, there's no there's no gas fires or, or electric uh, ovens or anything like that where people can get burned, but you know, they... Well, like a high-end hotel. You've got your own yeah, little kitchenette. You go downtown, eat something, and bring some back, and you can have it later. later on. Sure. Of course, like all assisted living facilities, they have a full kitchen with a healthy heart menu, and they provide three meals a day. And here's... We're going to hit the high side here. The, the really beauty of this thing is they're going to be at least 10%, charge 10% less than what you will find the charges are downtown. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot already. And veterans are going to get be given, they're taking a waiting list right now. We were getting some calls about waiting lists, and they were taking a waiting list right now. And so get your pen and your paper out. I'm going to give this to you twice. You can go and get on the waiting list by going to www.vieramanor, V-I-E-R-A-M-A-N-O-R.com. They can do this now? They can do this now. There's, in fact, there's already 20 people on the waiting list that I didn't know about until yesterday. Well, you just had a big briefing with some of the powers that be there, and this is going to be situated out there in Vieira near the VA clinic. That's right. I, you toss a stone out of the uh, the, the uh, head doctor's window out there and hit this place. So, Well, would that make it real convenient then if they need to go see their doctors? Oh, super convenient to I get like. VA health care right next door. They're going to build a sidewalk for where people can just walk right over to the clinic. Now, is this specific to veterans? This, well, 80% of the beds are going to have to be for veterans under the contract or they pay some kind of penalty. So that's that's beautiful, and I don't think they're going to have any trouble filling it up with veterans because this is not for veterans only in that also surviving spouses can go there and also spouses can go in there with the veteran, and they're giving them the same priority on this waiting list. I don't think the waiting list is ever going to include somebody that's not a veteran and their spouse or a surviving spouse of a okay. veteran. So I, What's I'm that totally address? excited about that. Give them that web address yeah, again. They can do this today. www.vieramanor, all one word, dot com. Or let me give you a phone number. You can call John Good, G-O-O-D-E, 1-855-639-9100. That's 1-855-639-9100. 9100. He's the project manager for this, and he said absolutely yesterday, give him my phone number. I, I'll talk to him. So. Well, this is, this is big news for all you folks out there that are getting to that point in your life, or you know a veteran that is. It doesn't necessarily have to be you, but keep in mind, the information we share with you, you can share with others. We encourage you to do that. If you know some folks that are going to be going into an assisted living facility, check out vieramanor.com. And we're going to bring you some more details about this in a future show, but man, is this exciting or what? Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. And it's out there right next to the clinic. We couldn't be happier because, gosh, if anybody deserves this kind of treatment, it's our veterans, those that have served this country and protected our freedoms. Can't say enough. Hope you all had a wonderful Memorial Day. We are busy as all get out serving the 920th Rescue Wing on Patrick Air Force Base with their welcome home. We've got a C-5 on the ground here unloading some troops that just came back from in-theater. Wish us well. Click on avetproject.org. Donate what you can. If you can't, sign up to be a volunteer for one of our many outreaches. We'll see you again next week on American Warrior Radio. And as always... And in light of all that, don't forget, think of that.